For those of you who keep up with updates on the channel, you may remember that I upgraded to AMD's 7800X3D, and so I wanted to share how well it does with emulation as promised. Originally, I had Intel's i9-9900K, and when taking a quick look at the specs for the 78X3D, one might make some comparisons. Both processors have eight cores, 16 threads, and can boost their clock speeds up to five gigahertz, but that is where the comparisons end. The 7800X3D has a greater amount of cache and a smaller processor as well, which makes for better performance. There are definitely more things that make the 7800X3D a better CPU, but I think it's just better if I show you the results. So before I get started, here are the specs. Let's start with the sixth generation using the XMU Xbox emulator. Some of you may recall in my comparison video with the i9 9900K that the CPU was struggling to push 60 frames per second when playing Gun Valkyrie. The game would also slow down when using the rocket boosters as well. Well, here is the same game running on the 7800X3D and it's flawless. Even other games like Burnout 3, which would drop the frame rate with the i9 9900K when it came to selection screen, showed none of the same issues with the 7800X3D. Now it is time for the main star of the show, the 7th generation, using the RPCS3 PlayStation 3 emulator. To ensure that I got a fair comparison of the i9-9900K, I overclocked the CPU between 4.9 and 5 GHz. Starting with Demon Souls, the two processors seem to both handle the 60 frames per second enhancement without any problems. This is the only example I have tested where the i9-9900K is able to keep up. Moving on to More Storm Pacific Rift, the i9-9900K struggles with 60 frames per second from the start of the race, but that is not the case for the 7800X3D, which managed to stay consistent until the end. Next up is Resistance Fall of Mankind, and once again, the i9-9900K is struggling to maintain 60 frames per second, while the 7800X3D doesn't even break a sweat, even with the massive amount of commotion happening on screen. From there, I tried out Army of 240th Day, and just like before, i9-9900K is having a tough time with keeping the frame rate at 60 frames per second, oftentimes dropping just close to or just below 40 frames per second. For the first time, the 7800X3D shows a bit of a struggle, but the dips are not going below 50 frames per second and not as long as the i9-9900K. I figure it's time to up the ante a bit more with these next two titles. Starting with Wipeout HD, I've enhanced the frame rate to 120 frames per second. At the lowest, the i9-9900K manages to stay above 60 frames per second but barely reaches the 120 frames per second, especially when there are more things happening on screen. The 7800X3D, while not perfect, manages to at least reach the 120 frames per second a little more consistently and with lows in the 80s at certain points. Next we have Drakengard 3 and the i9-9900K struggles with the frame rates going low as 37 frames per second when things get crazy on screen. It also fails to hit 120 frames per second, even at times when there are no characters present. The 7800X3D, on the other hand, is able to hit the 120 frames per second, but there are drops, and like with the Wipeout HD, 80 seems to be the lowest I've seen. So I think this gives you a good idea of the differences in performance that you're getting from the 7800X3D. Now, so far, all the games that I've tested are considered playable titles, there are, however, a few games that I have been trying out that have not been given the stamp of approval, so I just wanted to make that disclaimer before showing you these results. I want to give a quick spoiler warning before starting with Metal Gear Solid 3 HD Collect. When using the i9-9900K to play this game, there were two locations where the frame rate dropped, one of which was the final fight. The difference with the performance using the 7800X3D is instantly night and day. It is running incredibly well, and I definitely wish I had waited to get the 7800X3D before doing a full playthrough. Next up, we have Killzone 3. Now, I should note this is not the most performance-heavy location, 
and yet there are still noticeable drops at certain points during this playthrough. It is beyond a shadow of a doubt putting some hurt on the i9-9900K as I noticed the biggest drop coming in around 37 frames per second. With that being said, the 7800X3D is also getting put through its paces, albeit not as bad, with it managing to maintain 60 frames per second a little more often, with the lowest drop coming around 48 frames per second. So far, I think it is fair to say that the 7800X3D is definitely a good upgrade from the i9-9900K. It definitely manages more times than not to work with game enhancements to give higher frame rates. Now, I do want to mention that outside of a memory overclock for the 7800X3D, all my tests were done at stock settings. There is one feature known as Precision Boost which could potentially make improvements to the titles that struggled a bit with performance. I do plan to use this feature and maybe do a follow-up video to show the results of that test, so make sure to subscribe and if you found this video to be informative, give it a like. For now, this is the Core Your Entertainment Techie, signing out.